I have to admit that when the uh, coronavirus first started causing deaths, I looked at the um, the small amount of deaths at the beginning, and I was like, "Oh, that's that's barely anybody. That's that's not a very big portion of the human population." And I didn't really fully take into account how bad it could get. And now, well, I mean, not just now, but in the last few weeks. I slowly started to understand uh, how much of a threat it is to us as human beings. Um, my tendency to not overreact sometimes leads me to not react with the appropriate caution. Now, I've of course been um, social distancing as much as I can at my job. I'm considered an essential employee. <laughs> Working at a grocery store, I've never felt essential before, but apparently during during a pandemic, uh, I'm essential as well as a lot of my friends and um, of course medical staff is essential of course doctors surgeons um, they're on the front lines I don't feel like I'm on the front lines as much as they are uh, I'd call them true heroes I don't really feel like a hero but we're getting extra hero pay but um, you know I talked with one of my friends and we were like yeah we don't really feel like heroes and people are thanking us a lot and um, I think a part of it is that it hasn't really hit my suburb yet. Not not hard. Um, but it seems like it's going to spread to just about everywhere. Um, it feels like it feels like when you look at the number 2%, 2% of the people who get it die. It doesn't feel like a lot. Um, but it's many times worse than the flu because of that number. But as the as the bodies pile up, you start to realize how much 2% of a population is who gets it. Now, since more and more people are getting it, it's going to get harder and harder to find certain resources. And also, hospitals just don't have ventilators. Um, they need way more than they have. Um, it's caused me to stock up on canned goods. I'm not taking like the last goods off the shelf, don't get me wrong. I'm still leaving plenty for everybody else, but I wanna make sure that my extended family and friends have food if it comes down to not being able to get it as often as possible. That's been one of the things I've been preparing on um, without taking too much of the resources that we all draw upon. Um, but I feel like there's, a, there's another side effect to this that um, I'm not sure if it's you can consider it as beneficial. Look, I'm touching my face. I'm already messing up. <laughs> I don't know if you can consider it as beneficial, but I think that it's given humanity a good a good amount of alone time and um, and kind of suppression from being social uh, to really look at ourselves. I mean, my life has not changed at all. I still go to work, same hours, same days. I don't go to a lot of places. I, I can't go to school anymore, but my classes are online now uh, for my university. My life hasn't changed a whole lot, but I'm starting to realize that it could. And if you're like me and you didn't really take it seriously until now, or if you're still not taking it seriously, think of how bad it could get just for your family. The very old or the very young. Usually it's the very old who die, but that's not in every case. Um, you know, if you had to lose one family member, for most of us, that'd be terrible. Um, which one would you want to lose? <laughs> That's a hard question to answer. And I found myself asking that the other day, asking myself, if I was going to lose a family member, like who are the oldest in my family and how likely is it that they would get it in particular? And uh, looking at the numbers, it seems like 50 to 75% of the world's human population will get it. And if 2% of us die, um, and there is no, there isn't a cure found within a year. Um, it's it's going to look bad. Everybody's going to be touched by the pain that uh, COVID nineteen will bring. And some people, some people are pointing fingers into the worst ways, like the attacks on Chinese and Asian Americans in the United States is awful. Um, even if you blame that that first case in China, that guy, if you're going to blame anybody, I, mean, I wouldn't even blame him necessarily because he didn't know he was gonna, this was going to happen. But if you're going to blame somebody, you can blame that one guy, patient zero, but you don't blame a whole ethnicity of people. 
That's just ridiculous. That's like seeing a, I don't know, seeing a black dude beat a white kid up and then just hating black people for the rest of your life. Just any number of black people, all black people. It's, just, it's ridiculous. I feel like a lot of those people that are doing the attacks were just on the edge anyway of, they were already racist, but now they have an excuse. Uh, but in this case, it's especially ridiculous. I mean, it's always ridiculous to blame a, a whole ethnicity. That should never happen. But in this case, it was like one guy and he didn't mean to. Um, from what I've heard, I don't know how accurate this is. He ate a bat and he got and, and developed the disease because of that. I don't know how accurate that is. But if that is the case, you still don't blame a whole ethnicity. It's completely ridiculous. Um, I would urge everybody to take account of, you know, making sure you're taking care of your families, making sure that your families are taking the right precautions, make sure that you're not bringing something back home that if you live with your family, your family could get. Um, I know it's hard, but a lot of us just need to stay home. Non-essential personnel need to stay home, follow what the CDC says, and even if it gets lonely, a lot of us are having to take one for the team, especially people who basically lost their jobs now, and they're not going to have a job for a very long time. That stimulus package might not be enough. I hope it is. I really do. But it might not be enough. Um, there's a lot of people out of work. The obvious ones are waitresses and waiters and restaurant staff, bartenders. Of course, a lot of office, uh, you know, people who work in offices, they can't go there anymore right now. And a lot of stores like spiritual shops, uh, malls, clothing stores, um, a lot of grocery stores, there can only be a certain amount in, uh, in the store at a time. Um, this is creating a lot of need for money because a lot of people are living pay paycheck to paycheck. And it's not easy to just lose that source of, of money and try to figure out how you're going to take care of yourself. And if you have kids, take care of your kids. Um, having to feed your kids now, sometimes, you know, a lot of people were, a lot of children, they would eat at school, something would be pr free lunch program. Now that doesn't exist. Now charities are popping up to make that a thing <laughs> where people are, families are sent food. Um, but, and then those, all those kids that are trapped inside, especially the young ones, not really understanding, but maybe kind of understanding, depending upon the age, why they can't see their friends. And just having to t either entertain and or educate them or and educate them um, in the place of schools. Uh, it's not a lot. I mean, a lot of parents weren't prepared for that. And it's understandable. Um, I guess in this video, I just want to share some of my general thoughts about this pandemic. I'm starting to realize how serious it is. It took me longer than it should have, um, even though I was following all the rules from the beginning. Um, I feel like I'm one of the, another reason why I'm not hit very hard is because I've always been an introvert and I have, I have friends of course, but, um, I'm not an extrovert. I, there, a lot of what I do is within myself and me working with my spirits and gods, but that hasn't changed. And I don't really have to reevaluate myself and where I draw my energy from. Like, f like some people who are very social, who get their energy from their friends and their family. Uh, emotionally, for that reason, it hasn't been hard on me, and spiritually, it hasn't been hard on me. Um, I don't go to church. I don't go to. Uh, there's no, there's no religious organization or spiritual organization that's anywhere close to me that I would go to. So that was another source of, of, grounding for a lot of people in their week, or in their month. Um, now that's just not possible. Uh, we're getting bombarded with facts and numbers about how many people died on the news. Understandable. The news needs to still talk about that for sure. Uh, it can be depressing for a lot of people. I think I have been drinking a little bit more, to be honest. Uh, just because everybody is so afraid. I'm not... I'm realizing how bad it is and I'm taking precautions. I'm like, well, I need to, I need to make sure we have enough food for a while just in case. Um, I'm, not, I'm not planning for years ahead or even a year ahead, but just a little extra just in case. Um, but I don't feel, I feel no fear of death for myself. I don't think I would die, but even if I did, I don't fear death. Um, what I do fear is death of my loved ones. I think that's where my fear is at. And maybe my slight bit of more depression um, is, is because of that. Uh, now, don't, don't forget to use this time to really search yourself. 
your function, who you value most in your life, um, who you are as an individual. What you do when nobody else is around is really what defines you. Uh, who are Basically, who are you without everyone else? A lot of people haven't thought about that before. Now we are forced to. Once again, not, not a problem for me, but for a lot of people, yes, it is a problem. So these are just kind of my thoughts on COVID-19 right now. Um, a lot of my videos, I'm going to probably be making a lot of videos about my thoughts on COVID-19. This is number one. Um, but I just wanted to share some thoughts, some some ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous things I'm seeing. Um, before I go, I just want to say that somebody tried to take paper towels out of an old woman that works at my job's cart that it just bought them. It's like, and that was like a week ago. It's like, come on, dude, were you already on the edge? Is that why you reacted this way? Come on, paper towels and toilet paper aren't even a necessity. If we really have to, we can use towels or leaves. Um, I know it sounds primitive, but it's not high on the list of what we need. However, food that will survive, survive and can be stored is high on the uh, on the list. So. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, maybe you want to share some of your thoughts about COVID-19. Hell, if you want to do a collaboration, feel free to contact me at www.facebook.com slash hunter.salazar. If you want to talk or if you want to say, hey, let's do a collaboration. Let's raise awareness. Let's talk about this. Give our thoughts. Do something positive. Um, if you have any ideas, feel free to contact me there through Messenger. You can friend me, of course. Um, Thank you very much for listening. Don't get overwhelmed in this time. Just take deep breaths, step back, and don't fall into pandemonium. Not yet. <laughs> Just not yet. Thank you very much. I hope all of you remain safe, and all of you have a wonderful day.